Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day 13, lucky 13 of the December Lico Daily Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Uh, let me know what you think about today's farm, Burst Balloons. So usually I sub these live and I do the explanation live, so you see me as I think through the problem, as I go through them. Uh, and Burst Bubbles is, uh, Burst Bubbles, Burst Balloons is one of those classic ones um, where... It is just hard to do without uh, thinking about it. It is one of the... So the short idea on how to get this is that it is dynamic programming. Um, and the dynamic programming that you're trying to do here is called... What I call, anyway, divide and conquer dynamic programming, where basically you're trying to figure out... You know, you, you you have some segment and you're trying to break them up into pieces and then trick, try to figure out the, the solutions to the pieces and then merge them back in some way. Okay, let me actually read the poem because I actually don't remember which variation this is, uh, but I have some idea of it. Okay, given n balloons from 0 to n minus 1, there's a number in the balloon, you burst all the balloons. When you burst I, you get nums up left, and numbers of I and numbers of right coins. Okay. So basically, in, in initially, you burst one, then you get three, one, five. Okay. So I think this is one of those first problems that becomes very difficult for dynamic programming because at least this is the way that I thought about, I remember thinking about it way back when, which is that uh, in many dynamic programming problems, you're able to be a little bit careless. And what I mean by that is that, and I'm not saying you're careless, but you're able to be careless. And what I mean by that is that a lot of those problems are symmetric, right? And what I mean by that is that symmetric, it, you could go left to right, right to left, up to down, down to up, uh, and you go forwards or backwards. And because it's symmetric, it actually doesn't matter which direction you do it or what order you do it in. Um, because if you're doing the wrong order, you, you could just reverse the order and it's the same, right? So, so you know, th those are symmetric dynamic programming. Uh, I believe this is one of those cases where it is not. You have to do, um, because there's some implication about the states. So let's solve this together and kind of see where we go. Oh, this, um, Hmm, okay, there's an implicit one balloons on the left and the right. Okay, uh, and actually, let's let's actually add them, even though we we will not burst them. So okay, so yeah, so we will go for it together. I like to explain this a little bit through code, especially for dynamic programming, because dynamic programming is all about the transitions, and then we'll go through them together, and it'll help me with the visualization as well. And we'll see if I actually solve this uh, in good time. So yeah, so now we, I just do this to, um, eh, just to pad the ones in the side so we don't have to worry about like weirdness. Um, okay. So then now, hmm, how do we want to represent it, right? So. I'm spitballing here, meaning that I'm thinking from my head. It might we might make some changes later on, but let's say we have. Uh, I'm trying to find, try to figure out naming stuff is always hard. I always just write go, but I think that's terrible for interviewing. So if you're interviewing, choose a more sensible name. But let's just do uh, get coins. Maybe uh, you you have a left a right interval, right? Because basically you st you have the left and the right, and you want to get the maximum way to. Uh, burst these balloons and yeah and hmm. let's think about this for a second let me make sure so right now I'm just thinking about the base case I think the base case is when they collapse to one to only have one balloon and then when that's the case you can prob really just uh, return num sub left. I'm not sure if this is true, but let's leave this here for now. Uh, that Sometimes it is not, and uh, yeah, so we'll have to remember the base case. But okay. 
Uh, N is less than 500, so okay. Yeah, so the 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 natural way to think about this would be to go through for um, hmm, I in range of left sub right right. Yeah. So what what so the tricky part about this now is that usually you want to um choose the next bubble to burst but the hard part about this as we were talking about with symmetric and stuff is that you actually want to choose the balloon that is the last balloon to burst right so that means that you know we have some get coins of left to I, uh, and then um, that means that we actually, yeah, okay. I, I I vaguely remember this now, and that's why sometimes it's easy to have trouble with because you're thinking, uh, and that this is my way of thinking about it is that I'm always like, okay, now now that we're having this interval, let's say we, I want to burst one, right? Uh, you know, I want to burst the one here. That means that, you know, you may write something like, okay, get coins of, um, you know, left, uh, I, that, and then I don't know, right? You may burst this balloon, you get the score, which is 315, and then now there's some like weird contiguous pieces. And I think there is a dynamic programming that allows you to do that, but that's going to be really slow. Uh, it's going to be like n to the cube or n to the fourth or something like that. So what you actually want for this problem, and I, I, I'm i trying to figure out visualization, but I guess this array is a little bit too small. Uh, and of course, we added one in the in the beginning and the end. What you want is actually okay. What happens when I, um, let's just say middle, when middle is the last balloon to burst, right? Well, when you know, let's say say this is middle, just point at a random pointer. If this is the last balloon balloon to burst, that means that we already burst all the balloons except for the. Uh, outer bounds we bursted all the balloons we bursted all the balloons and then now we have this balloon and now we finally burst it so it's five one and one right um and in this case you'll be left right so it'll be five left and right which is one and one so in that way then now you can recursively go to the stuff that's in the actual uh in the components and then max over those. So that's the way that I would think about it. It is really, like I said, the hard part is that you have to think about it, it you know, for certain other dynamic programming problems, you're able to think about it forward uh, and the backward is symmetric. So you're, you're able to kind of think of it that way. But in this problem, these problems, you have to be, uh, think precisely, um, it, it matters which direction you go. And in this case, that's what we're gonna do. So, okay. So let, let's get best as you go zero just for the max score. Oh yeah, so if actually in this case, this is not the uh, base case then. Uh, and we'll, we'll go over it, uh, you know, we'll go over the base case in a bit, but okay. So that means that now we want, uh, you know, mid, num sub middle, times num sub left times num sub right right as we talked about uh because now you know our borders let's just say is left and all the way to the right these are the last balloons to be burst and this is the score that we get when we burst it last but before that we have to burst all the balloons in between so we can do that so now the score as you go to this plus uh, get coins of left plus one. Hmm. No, uh, left to middle. 
And the reason why is that we actually never burst the borders in, in our constraint. And this is something that we might have to talk a little bit closer is that, um, is that when we define the function, that is critical whether you define the bounds inclusively or exclusively. So basically, uh, burst all balloons inside left, right, not including left or right. Um, and this is because we also have, it's an easier case to follow because we have uh, the ones in the outside and we don't want to burst them, right? So basically now, okay, we get left, we get middle, and then we also add the get coins of um, middle to right, right? So that's the score. And then we just check to see if it's a better score. If it is, then great. And then we return best. So that's basically our dynamic programming problem. Uh, usually I will... You know, talk about memorization. Um, I, I think for now, um, I assume that you have a good understanding of dynamic programming because if not, I guess I should have said this disclaimer early on, you should practice your dynamic programming found, uh, fundamentals and foundations until you're more comfortable with this. Um, so right now, that being said, I'm going to use a Python trick called LRU cache. To be honest, maybe sometimes I'm just a little bit... Uh, tired right now. And what this does, in a very short explanation, is that in Python, this is called a decorator. And a decorator, this actually wraps the function. And what this particular decorator does is that it wraps the function in a way such that uh, when it sees the same input, it will try to fetch the... Uh, well, first of all, it'll, it'll look at the cache. If it's in there, it, it will uh, fetch from the cache and then return it. If it's not in there, it actually wants this code. Okay. So yeah, so then now we could just return get coins of zero and then n minus one. Um, cool. And also we have to do the base case. The base case is actually, uh, again, num sub left times, and of course left is equal to right, num sub, well, hmm. Hold on a second, right? Uh, can, is this the base case? So let's say we, we, we're we here, we want to burst these balloons, uh, and then now we choose a mid that's like here, uh, and because we, we never... We should never, I mean, uh, I think I might have... Yeah, uh, error here. So we start from left plus one and we go to right minus one in the middle uh, just to get the bounds correct. Um, do we go to right? No, yeah, we don't go to right exactly. Um, so that means that in that case, in that case, we don't ha have any base case, I think. Um, and the reason is because if left plus one is equal to right, which is meaning that they're next to each other, then then this would never run, and then best would just return zero, right? So that's probably what we expect. Uh, and okay, so I'm I'm gonna give it a go, just to uh, test the compiler out. That looks good. Uh, I was gonna look copy more test cases, but I don't see any. Uh, the the one case that I'm worrying about is the n is equal to 500. So, oops. That's what, 36, 48. Oh, okay. Oh no, this is too slow, right? Hmm. Well, I was gonna say, um, so this is dynamic programming. <laughs> uh, and what is the complexity of this, right? Well, the complexity of this is actually, so the number of possible inputs, number of possible inputs is equal to, um, well, n squared because because left could be zero to n, roughly speaking. Set it zero to n, 
uh, right could be also roughly speaking 0 to n. And however, and each of these, um, so th there are n square possible inputs, and then the for loop in the middle is O of n. So each call does uh, O of n work. So in total, this is actually O of n cubed, right? So this is n cubed, and for n is equal to 500, that is way too slow. Um, so now we have to figure a way to, um, to well, to, uh, to, to optimize the n cubed to something faster, because uh, n cubed is too slow, right? Uh, yeah, so this is n cubed. For 500 cubed, it is probably pretty close. So we would have to probably do some optimizations. Maybe LOU cache is too slow. I don't know. If I feel like LOU cache has been a little bit slow lately. So, okay. So what I'm going to do is just actually do what I usually do on stream then and just implement the memorization. Uh, okay, so then now let's say, as we talked about, um, yeah, the left could be 0 to n, the right from 0 to n. So let's just go cache is equal to, uh, doesn't really matter, right? Times n for, do, 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 do. and then we write um, is cached or uh, uh, yeah, calculated, say, is equal to the same thing, but force instead, right? And I just like to be explicit because for education, educational purposes, I usually write it a little bit differently. But yeah, if calculated of, I just also want to make sure that I don't have an infinite loop somewhere by accident, but I feel like I'm okay. Yeah. So if this is, you know, calculated, then we just return it from cache. Otherwise, we put this into the cache and also set it to calculate it. Oops. All right, let's try again. Uh, yeah, so not gonna lie, I double checked the test cases uh, and it seems like huh, this, this, this is one of those earlier problems where the constraints are a little bit misleading and wrong, but actually n cube is fast enough. And even though my test cases, uh, my test case of 500 elements is uh, too slow, if I actually click on submit, somehow it actually just accepts. Um, so yeah. So, okay. So yeah, that, uh, I hope that you have a good understanding of this problem, even though that was a little bit awkward. I edited a little bit of things out uh, because... I don't know. This was just a really awkward problem with the constraints. But that said, uh, yeah, it is n cube time uh, and in o, uh, o of n square space. Uh, we went over why this is n cube. So yeah, let me know what you think. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me in Discord. Uh, remember that this problem is hard. Feel free to come ask me questions. But also, yeah, uh, uh, practice, practice, practice. And I will see y'all tomorrow. Bye-bye.